as long as many of us have been alive, I guess. And the, they have a, a second floor, obviously, and access to <coughs> primarily through escalators. It's never been successful. The rent that they get on the second floor is like one third of what they get someplace else. I'm, I'm proposing, excuse me, uh, I'm proposing, which I think I mentioned to you before, I'm proposing uh, leaving Bower Hill Road where it is, but making Bower Hill Road two lanes in that direction toward Washington Avenue, <coughs> making Baldwin Street two lanes in the opposite direction. That will do a couple of things. I, I, all economic development is from consumer motors. It's, it's that simple. Every expert, every book you read will tell you that. The advantage of that is you will uh, transfer 10,000 consumer motors today into 20,000. You will reduce the traffic congestion time in half, and uh, you'll just have more people going by the same stores. And also, rather than, uh, I think I mentioned at the meeting when Carol happened to be here, that the present width of the uh, McLaughlin River Creek is only about uh, 30 feet. That should be made 60 feet. And also, uh, this dotted line that I have here, I, I don't think I gave any of you guys a copy of this. But, uh, this dotted line is a 15-foot wall uh, that would protect all of the uh, would protect all of the properties on Baldwin Street, and uh, that would include the bridge. And I think the other uh, the other day, I think Pat Lazy mentioned that the trying to get the railroad company to build a bridge that's, uh, the one they have now there is about 40 feet in span. As I mentioned to you, the bottom of the bridge is only seven and a half feet above the surface of the water. It's almost ridiculous. But the real problem is the culvert. But at any rate, one of the things I was going to suggest that you could look into, the railroad bridge is actually two bridges. The superstructures, those, uh, Five and a half foot beams are still there for the one when they moved the tracks over right, 15 feet. Uh, you might be able to find your way around having to deal with the railroad so that they wouldn't interfere with widening three bridges to 60 feet by sim simply have them, having them rebuilt, use the beams on the existing bridge, have the railroad tracks moved there while a new 60 foot long railroad bridges built where you guys want to put it. How would that be paid for? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Matter of fact, well, well, I, I have to, both sides. You come up with an idea, how are you going to pay for it? How, how are you guys going to pay for Carol's $32 million project? Why well, ask a question like that to me when you guys have not received any itemized line items for that? Well, that's one of the main questions I have. I'm glad to hear that. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what this will do. So go back to yours, because that's sure. your suggestion. Sure. I want to know how every the 15-foot wall that you're talking about, how's that all going to get paid for? If, you, if you're lucky enough to get help from the state, federal, and the county governments, that's the only way it's going to get paid for. Now, I want to mention one other thing, too. Uh, if you think... It is, you know, we always, we've been talking, fortunately, about acknowledging that this is a regional problem. It's not just a problem for the people in Bristol, because the watershed from Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park is creating a problem. Excuse me. Uh, in my opinion, if you think you're going to get Upper St. Clair and Bethel Park to contribute enormously to solving the regional problem, You'll be lucky if you do, and I'd certainly praise you if that's possible. But what I'm suggesting is by solving Bridgeville's flood problem on Bridgeville's property, this channel, by the way, being made 60 feet instead of uh, 30 feet, by lining it with concrete and even making the creek bed concrete, like they've done in other places, uh, that, would, that would make the evacuation so enormously rapidly. I really wouldn't care very much what they did in Upper St. Clair and, uh, and uh, Bethel Park. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to preserve, excuse me, uh, this, the plan that I'm suggesting would preserve the value of the property of the people who own the property now, whatever they're, the people, for example, on the north side of uh, Baldwin Street would get 
substantially more for their property if they knew it was going to be turned into a 350 car parking lot. And the people on the opposite side of Baldwin Street, if they knew they were going to be in viable retail space buildings, but as you, as I think we all know, if you want a retail business to succeed, you need parking, people walk across the street on the first floor into the retail business. That's the way it works. And I can't, this is just a, this is just a, a, a picture of um, showing the, the two, the four lane road, and you guys can study this later, but uh, I am about to talk to engineers who know about this stuff, and uh, I'm confident that the advice I'm giving you now is good advice. I would stop pursuing the project that's been proposed to you, uh, not only because my project would only cost half as much, but that will definitely destroy the only potential central business district in Bridgeville that could be made bigger than our central business district. And, uh, and Produce that much more tax revenue. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for your time. Okay. Um, council recognizes uh, Ray Airholz. Thank you. I was last month. I spoke about the traffic on the back street and yes. on uh, Winfield. I know school's been started in three weeks. I've noticed that the police follow the bus, which is great during the day. However, the traffic still continues on. Uh, no, no decrease in those pay continue to increase for the new building going on. I spoke to the chief today as far as possible solutions and also emailed Mr. Henderson on some possible solutions, suggestions from the neighbors I spoke to on Winfield, Bank Street, and on Lafayette. They all be supportive of anything that we could do to help this situation. I just wanted to just kind of re reiterate again what, what I brought up last month regarding traffic on Bank Street and on Winfield. You know, I don't have any. I, mean, I, I understand. I just wanted to. Yeah, <coughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Fred uh, Valentino. Um, I was attending, uh, maybe some notes, uh, <coughs> speaking about these, but after I heard Bob and saw this, I think uh, I'm going to shove these and tell you. That I don't understand why you would follow this project. You've got a project on Washington Avenue. I think I remember 20,000 cars a day travel Washington Avenue. That's what you should be developing, not Baldwin Street. Did, you, did anyone think? Right. That? It's not. This isn't about developing Baldwin Street. It's about trying to solve a problem. Out there and the development is a byproduct. We can kill two birds with one stone and we'll do that. I it isn't about, it isn't like, oh, we want to develop Baldwin Street that is big economic development. Well, it's, we have, we have members of this community coming to us that have been out of their house and can't go back and they have nowhere to go and they're continuing to be, they're being continually flooded and we're trying to find a solution. So it isn't about, Oh boy, we picked all the street for redevelopment. Nature. Okay, I, 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 think I understand that we also have problems on Carroll Avenue. Right. Okay, that we have exactly the same problems there. There's people down there that haven't been in the house in three or four days. Okay, but, and I've never been an advocate or proponent of build that and they will come, like in Fill the Dreams. So what I've heard here tonight, I, I, I disagree with Bob. And this, and this, that shouldn't happen. That's a development over there. And what Bob said about this being uh, developed as a central business district, you've got from Bar Hill Road all the way to the shopping center. That's where it should be developed. How is that going to stop flooding in your house? Well, that it's not going to solve any problem. I'm just telling you my, my personal opinion that if there's the, if there's projects in Bridgeville that should be developed to bring business into the district, into Bridgeville, it's not on Baldwin Street, it's on Washington Avenue, where 20,000 cars a day travel that road. I mean, again, I don't know how many 
how many travel to Baldwin Street, but it can't be 20,000 cars a day. About 10, probably. 10. About 10,000. Plus, you have all the other problems over there, whereas we're, we're standing right now in an area that's four feet in the flood zone. Four feet. Washington Avenue is not in the flood zone. This is in the flood zone. So to raise this four feet to get it out of the flood zone is a heck of a lot easier than solving the problem down in Baldwin Street. You know, again, my, my comments here are extemporaneous because I wasn't really thinking about talking about this tonight. So if I can get to what I really wanted to talk about, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys and women for giving your time. Um, so again, it's a thankless job. I also want to uh, thank the police chief for putting the uh, information on the uh, on the internet about the morning people. Uh, there are a lot of police chiefs total would do what you did, so thank you. And also, if you don't mind, I want to correct you. The flooding here on uh, Car Carroll Avenue mm -hmm. got to start down by the roller skating rink. It starts right here. That's why I was here last week, last, last month, trying to get people to understand that the water on Carroll <coughs> Avenue comes from right here. I have to build a four-foot wall here behind the Dairy Delight to have the creek not, uh, not come out of the creek, uh, not come out of the creek bed. And I uh, actually walked with Joe uh, Sykes for, uh, to show him, right Joe? Yeah, we had, we had a nice, uh, Nice walk that one. And there was still a couple things I wanted to show you too, but we have to get back together. Okay, so so I guess Jack, what I'm saying is, okay, the warning signs for the floods for the water here are not down in the skating rink. They're right here. Okay, so that's the first sign of the flood. I, Fred, I wasn't at last month's council meeting, but I was going off of what my observations were. I thought they started back in that corner, back behind your old business, and worked its way up here. At least that's what it appeared. <laughs> when we're standing out here on the well, road. So I'm hoping to get out of the old car wash and see the flow of the water goes that way, not what, what you suggested. Excuse me, Fred's absolutely right. I mm -hmm. talked to the guy that owns Steel Built, the, the bowling alley guy, the DNC. The, they all said, what Fred's saying, that the water gushed out of the culvert that's behind the ice cream store it started up the flooding. Each one of those people I interviewed said the water came down Carroll Street. They did not come over the embankment. On okay, so that, yeah, you know, so you're you're gonna, 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 okay. But it's going to take more than a four foot wall. Sure. Okay. And, and um, <laughs> well, four foot would actually, four or five foot would actually put you on the same level as Washington Avenue. So if Washington Avenue, again, you know, I know it's a matter of inches and something, but Washington Avenue is not in the flood zone. We are in the flood zone, right here. So you, you can rent that by confining the creek bed, the flooding water to the creek bed. That, right. That's what these plans Reaching the creeks, and that's, what, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Right. I want you, you people to understand that if you put a five foot wall, four foot, five foot wall there, that flooding that we had would not happen. I'm not talking about sewers, I'm not talking about anything right. else. I'm not talking about Baller Street. But our property here would not have been flooded if we had a five foot wall there. That's minimal. Now, I know Joe, Joe's, uh, when we walked the line there, said that part of the problem is we don't know who owns the property. Do we even have, do we have a, a survey of where the creek? We can get that one. I think what I said, I think what I said to you, Fred, is that, you know, I think people own property to the center. Their property is going to the center so of the creek. creek. Okay, so we, that would impose the necessity to get everybody to give us an easement or dedicate stream property to either create a right of way, which someone would have to take ownership, it would be the borough or the flood control authority, or there would be an easement that the people would retain their property in the easement. I think the other thing we talked about was down past the, the, the uh, bowling alley on that paper street is where the storm sewer is, and we talked about the possibility they put it back. So I'm back, yeah, so that's well, also there, so the water could come up through the storm sewer system. So are, are we going to, are you going to propose that? Yeah, well, it's part of one of our projects that will we'll make that one of the uh, improvements. Okay. All right. 
Um, can I ask, uh, Mike, where is the four hundred eight thousand dollars coming from to do the bridge project? Grants and taxpayer dollars. General fund. General fund. The general fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. General fund. Okay. Question with the solicitor. Can we legally get out of that contract with Penbot? That's a question that I would answer if it was brought to me by the council. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't just answer legal questions, question and answer for public. If they wish me to address that question, I will. But yeah. my board has not asked me to even entertain that, and I think we that decision not. is they don't <clears throat> wish to. Is that correct? Right. We have not talked about rescinding the, that project. So there's no support for me. But when you enter into a contract and you um, rescind it, that usually has legal consequences. We have a contract. Thank you. What were our situations? Okay, so you're talking about if you're talking about not being able to get. I know you can't answer. You just said you can't answer. But you're not. So we I probably Bridgeville is probably bound by that contract. A big one. Bridgeville is probably bound by that contract. Your I, I'm, I'm asking. I don't. I, that's that's not appropriate for the, the yeah. question answer with the solicitor going to public. If you wish to make a comment, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I give advice to the borough council when they ask me to, not kind of just general questions. Okay, so, okay, so like no one, no one. And again, and again, that's not the borough's. Fred, obviously, I mean, there's there's opinions out there that we should not be putting that money towards that bridge project. We have discussed. Uh, whether or not what we can do, what we can and can't do. Okay, so uh, if, I'm, if I'm doing calculations here, one mil is equal to about $200,000? And it's not, over, it's, not, it's, not, it's not one year, it's over a course of a few years. Yeah. yeah. One mil. Yeah. One mil gets $200,000. So we're talking about possibly a two mil tax increase. To do that. That was money over time. That was money over time. Money we put that money. Well, whether it's money over time, it's got, it's got to be paid for out of the general fund. Right, and also, and I, and I just want to make a point because, and I feel strongly about this too, because there are, and I, I feel very strongly about the residents that are affected by the flood. It affected me very deeply. It was probably the worst three months that I have ever worked here. Um, to just have to go through that with them and see all the losses and everything that they had to go through. I'm not minimizing at all. But what I also see is right now, we are at the point where um, just to clean up, um, build walls, get back to where we were, we will have spent approximately $500,000 just to do that. We are moving forward. We've met with the DEP. We are costing projects, including track tracks, lowering the ball field, um, doing projects um, behind the beer warehouse. We're talking to the county about the bridge. We're talking about the, <coughs> the culvert. We're talking about your wall. And we're talking about the back channel. We're also talking about ways to finance those things. So it doesn't mean that that every project within the borough has to go away for the residents within the borough because we've had a flood, because we have 48 other, 4,800 other residents that live here. And we'll find a way to finance what has to be done in that corridor. So right now, we're under contract not only for the bridge widening, but for a McLaughlin Park upgrade and for adaptive signals throughout Washington Avenue. 
One of the things that we do <coughs> in the municipality is we try to apply for grants, and grants are matching grants. So right now we're under contract for our $217,000 grant for McLaughlin Park, uh, $58,000 for uh, uh, $218,000 grant for adaptive lighting that will, that will attach to South Bay and Township for upgrades, and the bridge widening project. So, could, could I uh, just stop you in that? <laughs> the Dwaglin Park was underwater. Right, and what I'm saying is, People aren't giving us a chance to take a look at, okay, McLaughlin Park was underwater. We're not sure if we're going to have a ball field or what we're going to do. We're under contract with the DCNR for upgrades. We are probably going to have to go back to them and say, we can't do that. So probably $217,000 is probably coming back into our general funds, <coughs> which will probably be put toward what, what has to be done there. But we have been going nonstop since the flood to even be able to look at these things. So we need time to cost out what, what the things that we need to do are going to be able to cost us what, if any, loans we're, we're need, going to need to get, and go from there so that we can do what's best for everyone within the borough of Bridgeville. And, you know, let me add to that, Fred. These, these projects aren't going to happen overnight. No. Okay? We, Lori and I went down to the DEP to talk to them about the necessary permits we need to get for some of these projects. There's some simple projects that we can get what is known as a general permit, which we get through the Allegheny County Conservation District, which we can get within a few months, okay? Those are for the simple products. But for some of the larger projects, it's going to take up to a year at least to get those permits because they're called a joint permit, which needs to be approved by the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers. So we have that bureaucracy to deal with, okay? I have a meeting tomorrow morning with the Army Corps of Engineers on a flood control project, and I want to talk with them about expediting our joint permit that we want to submit for the work up at the ball field and a potential project to, to remove the double culverts underneath Commercial Street. So these things all take time. I know everybody's anxious to get things done, but you know we appreciate your patience to get them done. And we may be able to, to get funding for those. That's things. right. And that's why we're talking to the DEP and the Conservation District and to the county um, to, to ensure that we're able to get these things done. If there's money out there, we're able to get the money to do them. Um, we're, able, we're able to do what we can do with monies available so that we can make the most of the projects. But we're not shoving any projects away and we're going to do the maximum that we can do for everyone and um, not shoving anything aside. You have to understand the frustration. And I understand that you just said that you suffered personally from this. Personally, just put in a brand new washer and dryer two weeks ago. A thousand dollars. One four four caravan. You know where that washer and dryer is going to go tomorrow? Out of the backyard. Some junk man is going to come around and take it out of the backyard thousand bucks used twice I come to, I came down here tonight <clears throat> there's some frustration because I'm angry it's 2004 2010 2013 2018 same story and we're spending four hundred eighty thousand dollars on a bridge to benefit not everybody in bridge of 4800 people or primarily St. Clair right. and South Bay. Does that make any sense? I disagree with that one. I, I disagree. That also benefits Bridgeville too. And well, it's for the benefit. Can, I say, can, something? Go, can go. I say something first? The majority of the benefit is going where with it. Can I, say, it can I say something first? Sure. You talk. Let me say my opinion now. 
before this flood happened, it was all talk about getting that all wide and everything else. Now, oh, the heck with that. We're down here at the flood. And the flooding, Mary can test to this. My mother grew up in here. This flooding's been happening for over 100 years in this town on the same streets. And why aren't people doing stuff from back then? There is not much you can do. Today, and if you pay attention, and I've heard this, and I've been saying this to a lot of people around, talking to the officials and that, if you ever notice, all these floodings, you're saying 4, 18, 10, all these ones. Is that strictly just in Bridgeville? No, it's everywhere. And it's getting worse and worse. If you pay attention to the country, our weather pattern is changing. And there's people that are getting flooded throughout this country that have never seen water in over 100 years. And now they're seeing it and having problems. And that's something that we all got to look at. We don't have the money in Bridgeville. Nobody has the money. States aren't doing it. I mean, it's something that we're not going to like to hear, and I get it. I feel, I go through this, and I deal with each individual person when I get the calls as a fire chief to go there from a flooding, from a fire, from anything. When I deal with fatalities. This is stuff, this is, I hate to say it, people, and I feel for you, I understand. But this is kind of life. We've got to realize that we need to start changing our lifestyle, maybe. A little okay, bit. Can I come back at you? And yes. This. So that channel from the Dare to Light all the way down is the same width. We've had probably 700 homes built since 2004, and they're still going up. It's the same amount of water going into that channel. What's going to happen? But who's going to fix that? Well, Right here, you got. We've we got. Fine. We have to now, find a solution. Now, what you just said is true. Did, since 1990, 91, everything that's been built has to have retention. That's right. And so that water doesn't doesn't flow directly into the creek at one time. It, and you just went through a rain event of seven inches that more than in any one Great. day that's ever happened in this area. And it didn't. It did breach the banks. Now it came off the source. Bruce Ivan was a uh, 100-year flood. I, I it, in 2004 was an year. If right, I've lived okay. here all my life too. You know, right. that's right. And I'm I'm angry because I don't want to go through this again. Yeah. You got you people don't want to hear irate people coming down and screaming and yelling. Like, it's the weather. It's the weather. It's the weather. We can't control the weather. How do you control the weather? We have to do something about the creeks. Where's the money coming from? That? That's what I want to do. We can find $480,000 for a new bridge. Let's find somebody to, to help the people right. along the right. street. I, I just don't know where. Okay. If the Army Corps is going to do it, we know. Okay. Let me just start. All right. Center. And I know some people were on their own time <laughs> and not on the clock when they were, were down there, so it's very much appreciated. Um, being the fact that I believe the end of our alleyway is our end of the alleyway, Jane Alley Extension as well. Okay. Yeah, like Jane. So I believe it's the first place that gets any water in it, regardless of what time of the day. I think the first rain drops back up into Jane Alley. Um, a couple things we noticed this weekend. And with Lori's help and 
some other folks' help of intervention. I've been asking for coffin blocks to be put at the end of the alleyway. I know they are a pain to move, but I also know it's possible. I also don't subscribe to the fact you can't do anything about Mother Nature because I snow plow. I do something about Mother Nature every winter. Um, what we noticed, and it's a real, it was a real simple thing, and I didn't expect it, and Bruce was standing on the bridge and I was yelling over them because we watched some fairly sizable trees come down. And my yell to him was, great, here we go, we better call Felina. Um, by putting those blocks in that access way, the water was once, we had the opportunity to go two and a half feet higher, <laughs> which was using the maximum amount of, really not the maximum, but we were using more cubic feet of these culverts than ever before. Also, by it not being run up against vegetation or earthen dam, the water was running faster and true. And with the exception of one piece of debris this morning, a little flimsy long limb, there wasn't a one piece that turned and blocked that bridge. You can go over there right now. There's virtually nothing there. I wasn't expecting that. And I was there all weekend. If I wasn't there all weekend, I was watching on the camera. <coughs> um, there's something to be said for just elevating. And this was just was simple, I think, civil 60 bucks a, mm -hmm. a section of lock. Um, it's still going to let some water through. Sure. But by keeping those streams running straight, it kept the debris running straight. And I would have bet a lot of money that something would have turned. And I think what happened at the end of Jane Street in the past, or Alley in the past, is it was starting to turbulent the water and get the debris start to turn and get crossways. And that's when we have <coughs> most of the problems of the floods this year. So I don't you know, a hundred dollar fix really had a huge benefit. I think we need to look into some, some more simple and eloquent ways to address this. Because not everything has to be a huge project. Right. Mm -hmm. And then address them as they go. Because this was a byproduct I didn't expect. Well it's like the bridge over on the other bridge up by Maple. We put it, I mean, it's like a straight shot there. Yeah. yeah, and it was it's still not down there, but yes. But it, that was, I mean, that it, water flowed straight. Right, and now it's been flooding. And even when it encountered the bend further down after the dairy light, <coughs> it had enough velocity that everything kept going. And when something did block up a wee little bit, it cleared. Yeah. So, um, what, what was amazing, what was amazing through all that was the velocity versus the volume. Instead of it right. coming up, the water was flowing faster <laughs> through, through everything. Because I, I was amazed. This, I figured it was going to breach, especially behind your place. Um, but that water just, and, and I was watching it up at the park right behind my house, and that, that water, the speed of it was unbelievable. <coughs> but the level never really raised more than six, foot, six inches to a foot at one time with a matter of rain up, upstream. Well, I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that the one, once it hit the one level, because we took pictures all day long, marking behind my house where it was going at, mm -hmm. and even though the level went up six inches or eight inches, okay, the amount of water that was going through there was unbelievable. Because in the morning it was a little bit of a lazy river; it was high, but it was. <laughs> but as the day went on and rain increased upstream. Um, it, it, it came at a much more faster pace, and that's when I was down your place. And, and by being deeper, if you notice, the manhole cover, which is on the Bower Hill side of the creek, mm -hmm. that also causes turbulence in the water, which is turning the debris. Yeah. Well, when the water came up a foot, <coughs> two feet higher than it <coughs> maximum as it could before, because it went second, then go into the alleyway, yeah. it started to go over instead of spinning on the manhole cover. So again, it kept things straight, because historically, the debris gets pushed over to the Baldwin side, mm -hmm. and then it ha it's limited to half the bridge to work with. Mm -hmm. So by increasing the, the using more of the capacity that the current bridges do have, it helped, but the, it also helped in keeping things in going. And once it got high enough, then the bridge started to use both halves, right. instead of forcing all the debris out. So again, you never know when you do these small changes, it might have a profound effect. Um, 
And I just know it was one that people have been fighting me on since we moved here, was to raise that elevation up. Um, you know, we still got water in the basement, but it, it's better than the, the place got wiped out. Right. And I think you could apply this all the way down. And it's simple. It's not the, I mean, it's not the fanciest fix in the sexy world. Way it and it might not be something that you might say, oh, wow, but you know, it works. Yeah. And at this point, I think it's all we care about is it works. Absolutely. Because I'm not one for moving backwards. You guys have your money allocated for this other project. Fine, find money for the next project. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we're doing with rebuilding. It's a little bit of blind faith. Um, the other only thing is on September 29th, the Beer Warehouse will be doing a bit of a fundraiser, kind of a beer festival tasting in the back parking lot. And we've asked, the only thing I've asked is anybody who's going to participate with us, it's kind of our Jenny's way to reintroduce the store. Um, anybody there, who's, they're going to have voluntary raffle items <coughs> and any funds we can generate from that, so I'm going to go to the club. It's September 29th, Saturday. So, of course, so, we, what did you say? During the day, that puddle behind your place got increased. Six and when I came back by about 4.30, 5 o'clock, it was gone. Yeah, it, it, went up and, it went up and down six times. Yeah, yeah, because I'm being dead. I've been in the park down a couple of times. But, six times. I mean, I was that, amazed. There's, that, a, there's a high <laughs> elevation issue there that yeah. could probably eliminate that. Yeah. And the other thing is by putting the copper blocks in. I mean, I'm I like a Florida, you have some time coming over, I'll show you. Um, that, that, I mean, I modified it. Uh, sorry guys, I did it because I wasn't going to watch it flood again. Yeah. And it would have flooded if we didn't do what we did. Bill was so did you raise that? Time. You raised that? Lori had um, one more row put on another row of offer block in. Yeah. But by doing that, we created a little retention area where normally there would have been dirt. <clears throat> and um, it kept the water, it was close. It was really close. But if, if that hadn't been done, though, if it would have fallen, would have flooded again. Yeah. I can promise you that every yeah. flooded. Mm -hmm. so, so, anyways, thanks yeah. everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. Excuse me, Tom. You guys have to remember that the debris was wiped out of that trip bed from Upper St. Clair through Bridgeville by the flood last month. That's why the debris that the fellows are describing wasn't insurmountable. It, it, it was much smaller. All you do, we do something like a trash rack. And now, that would help. and now you're, you're yeah. we're doing that we're doing that too. So I agree, that's a good idea. A, we have a lot of irons in the fire people. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, minutes. Uh, motion to borrow the mouth regarding the minutes of the August 13, 2018 regular meeting as submitted. Uh, Bruce Gallarucci. I'll second. And Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? All those opposed? Uh, resolution number 2018 10 motion for first regarding resolution number 2018 resolution creating a handicapped parking space at 1045 Grandview Avenue with appropriate signage and providing penalties for violations thereof. Uh, recommendation has been received from Chief King for the installation of the signage. Bruce Calabrici. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed? Thank you. Uh, current estimate number 1 2018 CCTV project. Motion to borrow comps regarding the renewal of current estimate number 1 2018 CCTV project to Jet Jack Incorporated the amount of $12,871.76 for work completed from May 29, 2018 through June 12, 2018. The estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineers. So moved. Uh, Joe Plasma. And Bruce Galarucci. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number 2 2018 Sanitary Soar Project uh, sorry, Repair Contract A. Uh, motion to Borough Council and run the renewal of current estimate number 2 2018 Sanitary Soar Repair Contract A to Neando. Uh, construction incorporating the amount of $80,016.74 for work completed to date. Um, estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. Uh, Nina Petricelli. Sir. And Bruce Gallagher. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? 
uh, police pension, uh, multiple uh, minimum municipal obligation certification. Uh, motion of the borough comes regarding the receipt of the police pension. Minimal municipal obligation of $79,744 for the 2019 budget year as prepared by the financial column. Bruce Gallarducci and Joe Fluster. All those in favor? All those opposed? Non uniform pension, minimal, minimum municipal obligation certification. Uh, motion of the borough council regarding the receipt of the non-uniform minimum municipal obligation of thirty-nine thousand eighty-three dollars for the two thousand nineteen budget year, as prepared by the manager of the Collins. Bruce Gallarducci, and Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, CDBG grant four four seven point two Chargers Park. Restroom bids, Char West Cog. Seal bids were opened in the Char West Cog offices on Friday, September 7, 2018, for the Chargers Park, Park restroom upgrade following bid results. Uh, select contracting $45,350 and U.S. construction incorporated for $60,800. Uh, motion of the borough comments regarding the bid for the Chargers Park restroom project as bid by Char West Cobb. Uh, grant funds for the pro uh, project totaling $30,000. $30, the balance would have been covered by general fund money. Let me add one thing to that. Yes, sir. I got a letter from uh, Char West Cobb this afternoon that their share of the grant would be, would be about the $30,000 50 $35,439.50. Which would reduce the borough's responsibility to nine thousand nine hundred ten dollars and fifty cents. Okay. We'll take the connection. Five. Five. Yes. Thank you very much. You can get the top orders. Yes. There's a motion. Is there? Or there's a. I made a motion. Mr. Gardici. I'm second. Vote. All those in favor. All those opposed. Motion carries. Uh, bill list, motion to borough comp regarding the September 2018 bill list. I'll move it. Uh, Joe Rucci. Oh, and Bill uh, Bruce Scott Rucci. All those in favor? Aye. Right. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, payrolls, motion to the borough comp to approve the payrolls of September 14, 21, 28, October 5, 2018. So moved. Uh, Bruce Rucci. second. And Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, motion carries. Monthly reports. The motion to accept and pay any commissions due the August 2018 real estate <coughs> tax collector report. Move. Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce Gallarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the July 2018 financial report. I'll move. Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce Gallarucci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the August 2018 police report. So moved. Second. Bill Henderson and Joe Gossler. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Aye. Committee reports. Bruce. I have all the reports. Other than thank you to our administrative offices and that for what they've been going through. Absolutely. <laughs> It's been grueling for all our people, public works as well. Uh, finance. Uh, I want to thank Lori for saying a large portion of what I was going to say, and you did a much better job at it, so thank you. Uh, real estate taxes have been coming in this month, assisting in our general fund. But actually, it was down to a, a, a low that uh, the borough hasn't seen in quite a few years, is what I've been told. Um, estimating right now, as Lori said, the flood expenses are going to be around 500000 And this would include your dumpster containers, the, the Maple Street wall. Uh, the contractor continues to accumulate expenses since the 21st, and, and the borough continues to uh, watch those expenses at the same time, uh, working hard to get things still done. A uh, great example of that is uh, we only spent, what was it, like $35,000 other than flood expenses this month. So, 
we're watching the expenses very, very detailed. That's all I have. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, yeah, pretty short here. Uh, Charter here is the park is temporarily closed. Uh, evidently, the crowd wasn't able to get down there. I was on the other side of the river, couldn't see the park. But evidently, the water got up to the roadway. Didn't get onto the field or into the concession stand or anything. So once the guys go down and clean the road up, make sure everything's okay, I'm sure the park will be closed. I'd like to say something about the uh, restrooms, if I could. Uh, it's great, we needed those restrooms since Ray was president of the VA. And <laughs> uh, I would really, we've been talking for years about putting cameras down there. And we're gonna have this nice new facility down there. And I always worry about vandalism. I think a camera mounted on the side of the uh, session stand, well, you can't put them in the men's room with the ladies room. <laughs> Putting at the door, that way at least you could tell, get a rough idea if anything goes wrong, catch it. The stuff does, it doesn't happen every week, but that part gets hit quite a bit by vandalism. I think it's time. There have been people in the past that objected to cameras saying they don't work. I think they do. They catch criminals all the time with them, what happens with them. A couple of people, maybe the cameras down there, aren't, is it going to kill us? And I think we should put them on Facebook. I mean, we'll catch them like that. Yeah. <laughs> if we go that route, Joe, I'd like to have the camera set up so that one could catch vehicles as they exit so we have a clear shot of their license plate because that could help in the event we're able to identify somebody. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Thanks, Joe. Uh, public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish I could say that our small group of public work could be dedicated 100 percent on the flood on the flood, but we still have to do our regular maintenance maintenance. Unfortunately, of that everything is combined together. Uh, we hear so much about the flood, like Fred said, you know, like the push and drive. We all did. I just put furnace eight thousand dollars. And uh, I'd want to thank a thousand dollars. Maybe tomorrow it'll be gone. We are on the same boat. It's a shame. But the people are right. Something. <laughs> we are working on a lot of things. We have meetings two, three times, two, three times a month, all day. We have one today. Things don't happen right away. But it's sad. I'm here 56 years. I never remember this. Never. I never remember my place way up Jane Street. You all know I got six feet downstairs. It's I never remember that. The pattern change. How we how we do that? The wall and this and that. But I hope someday in the future we can resolve all of <coughs> Anyway, public work, they pay the line, they rent the sweeper, cut the grass. It, it grows now. We'll tell you something. <laughs> Catch a base of repair, uh, pick up trash on the street, install street light in front of her, pitch buttholes, cut trees, tractor maintenance, police car maintenance, truck maintenance, escort entrance and charter park. The sweeper run at the uh, Following week, September 17th, so soon, next week. As I say, this, this flood is, is sad. Okay, we all know that. We try our best. Thanks, Nina. Sure. Uh, public safety bill. Look, I just power on a little bit and, and thank Lori and, and both chiefs for your proactive measures that you took this week. And uh, you know, Lori putting out a message proactively to the community, warning them of, of the impending possibility of a flood. And uh, Chief, your, you know, your real-time pictures and, and, and messages are really well received by the community. And I think we all look forward to them. Uh, more for entertainment value sometime, but this, this was a, a real emergency, and it could have been. 
And Billy, I know you put some folks out there delivering door-to-door uh, -door some messages about the emergency. So uh, we have good people in this community that, that really want to protect each other, and I really appreciate the emergency personnel. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill. Uh, the question here comes Fortunately for us, we didn't have too much to worry about with this flood this time, but Bethany, Presbyterian Church, Carolyn Boquet was the first person to call and say that the church would be open in the event that people needed housing. So far, they just have a family from Bethel Park there. Tomorrow is Representative Audite's Health Expo at Bethany Presbyterian Church from 9 to noon, free screenings and flu shots and pneumonia shots. We hope our seniors will take advantage of that. Also tomorrow evening will be the 9-11 service at Holy Child Church at 7 o'clock p.m. On 9-15 there will be a seminar at the First United Methodist Church on Racism in America. That's also at 7 o'clock p.m. And on August 29th, I attended a breakfast at the Rivers Club, a group called Celebrate and Share. They had this breakfast to honor the 98th Amendment, the anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment. And they recognized five women. And then I was one of the 14 mayors across Allegheny County that they recognized. And Chelsea Wagner was there. She has an organization now called Women for the Future of Pennsylvania. And they are raising money to support all women that are running for offices across the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. All right, uh, police chief. Yeah. Thanks, Council President. Uh, about three things ago, or first and foremost, I'll remind everybody school's back in. We've been following the school buses uh, in the mornings and in the evenings, and unfortunately, we've had very few tickets for cars passing the school buses whenever they've been loading up students. So, just a friendly reminder in here you have to stop, and the red lights and the stop signs are out. Um, also, the medicine take back box that we got a few months back, it is filled to capacity at the moment. We cannot accept any more medication. But it looks like sometime in October, we will have an opportunity to take it to Ross Township, dispose of the, the medical items that are there, and we will be able to start receiving items once again. Uh, finally, September 28th is a Friday. Between 1 and 3 p.m., we are honored to host a 10-year-old child by the name of Tyler Carrick. He is otherwise known as the Donut Boy. Um, he has his own Facebook page and YouTube page entitled, I Donut Need a Reason to Thank a Cop. His mission is that he wants to thank every police officer across America. And he's from Florida, and within the last two years, he's visited 39 states, and he's handed out over 70,000 donuts to police officers. <laughs> <laughs> or as we like to call them, power range. Um, so he's in Bridgeville, he's making a trip up the East Coast, and this, these, this is one of about six departments that he wants to visit in, in Pennsylvania, okay. so we're honored to have him between 1 and 3 p.m. on Friday, September 28th. Does he bring his own donuts? Is he like going to find out where he is? Is he sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts? I don't know the details yet, but you know, we have one at each end of town, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I don't want to miss <laughs> I don't know. Mom sent me an email said he wanted to come here. She's cracking jokes. All right, now let's look at the You have my written report. I just want to echo the comments from Mr. Gucci. Thank you, Mr. President. I, you have my report. A couple of things. I gave a separate report about the uh, meeting that Lori and I had with the DEP on August 23rd. 
uh, to discuss some projects that we'd like to do along the block of run. I'd like to get a motion from you first to proceed with uh, preparing the cost estimates and the plans and the permits for the, the following projects. Uh, the Commercial Street Arch Collar Replacement, the uh, Janeway uh, Access Ramp, uh, the removal of the sediment and the confluence of McLaughlin Run and Chartreuse Creek, and the construction of the breeze catcher and the creation of wet weather pulling area from the walk around park at the ball field. So uh, these are all going to take some time. Uh, the, the lower, the, I'll call them the lower hanging fruit ones, like getting the access ramp at the end of Jane Way uh, to complement the retaining wall down there, uh, was one of the lower hanging fruit ones. And the other one is the uh, removal of the sediment uh, at the confluence of the back channel of Chartreuse Creek and Monk Walk Around Run. <coughs> Uh, I have been in communication with uh, Fred Bingham from the Flood Control Authority, and we're going to see what the uh, Flood Control Authority can do to assist with that removal of that setup. Thank you, motion. I'd like to have a motion for that. Yeah. I make a motion. Yes, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. So, just as a confirmation, the trash catcher from the South Community's meeting, it didn't sound like the Allegheny County was going to speed it up to. You said it's going to take a year to be able to install it, right? It could take up to a year because you've got to get the right. joint the permit. Joint but I'm, when I meet with a gentleman from the Army Corps of Engineers tomorrow on another flood control product, I want to ask him if there's any way you can help us expedite it. So, they also said today, whatever we're going, if they can help you up and just let them know. Right. Yeah. Them all, so. yeah. But, uh, if everybody thinks that the trash catcher is going to be tomorrow. Right, yeah. it's not. It's not. Okay. So, and then the other thing is um, we have to take action on before the end of the year is the Act 167 uh, stormwater measure boards um, ask for uh, a motion for us to proceed with preparing the draft ordinance so that can be advertised and be uh, work with the solicitor and get it uh, passed before the end of the year. So then we're compliant with the LA County requirements. I make a motion. Second. I so move. Second. I mean, second. All those in favor. Sorry. Uh, 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 that's all I have. All right. Thank you very much. Can I ask one question? Sure. Joe? Yeah. Will the estimate, getting back to the trash rack, yeah. will that include the um, estimate for the maintenance required by the borough? There's a maintenance fee or an obligation to maintain the trash rack? Uh, we can figure something like that in, into it. That's, that's a good point. Just to have an idea yeah, of what it's going to cost us to be yeah. able to. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, Fire Chief Bill Chilio. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, <coughs> As the mayor said, we have the 9-11 ceremony tomorrow night. Uh, we will be up there. We will also be hanging our flag just before the entrance into the Holy Child Church. So hopefully we'll have a nice turnout. See everybody up there. Um, just to let everybody know, we have been very busy lately still. We haven't slowed down. Um, thanks to some of my members helping out throughout this weekend and Friday. And I just want to reiterate to some people just to let them know why we didn't pump their places out over the weekend they were calling. It's hard to take the water out of their basements when the creek level is up above for it to go somewhere. And also, unfortunately, and Joe probably can help you with this, our sewer system was full too because it's ancient. It takes water in places that we can't control. So with those two items up in the air, if I'm pumping out somebody's basement, all I'm doing is creating a circle. I'm taking it out, it's still coming in, sometimes just as fast or faster. So I've had many calls and we've told people this, that we can't do it till the water level, the table goes down. And we just don't know. And they're asking me, when do you think that's gonna be? I don't know. You know, by the time it goes down, we've got this next one to prepare for, to do and get ready for. Um, I did have a resident who was mad because they lost their brand new washer and dryer in there and I said to the person, I said, but Lori put it on the Facebook on Wednesday, we handed out papers on Friday for you to prep. And I mean, we sent out text alerts. And, and we put it on the website. Yep. And how much more, how further can we go? I can't provide my people to come into your house and move your stuff. You know, I have to draw a line somewhere, but we are giving people fair enough warning and they're still not happy with it. 
you know, losing it. But I apologize, but I can only do so much, you know, and we're trying, you know. But they also got to do their part and help a little bit also, show the initiative. So, and then it's the same game again for this week, you know. I'll be out and about if it comes again this weekend and morning. Um, the, the chief from the county, we talked a lot over the weekend and before the weekend about this storm coming in. And I'm sure him and I will be talking again more come this weekend of what's going on. It keeps me abreast of it a little sooner, which is nice. So. So I just want to add yes. um, <coughs> that woman that you were talking about. I, yes. I know that there are several elderly people that live on the streets. And I know there's a lot of volunteers at the churches. So if we identify somebody that needs help moving their appliances in the basement, there's volunteers at the church. I know holy yes. childs and night, so we can go help those people because I'm sure she couldn't move that stuff herself. So maybe if we could identify that and find somebody that can sure. help them. Most definitely start putting some addresses oh, together. Right. Like yeah, that's not bad. Don't idea. expect you to do, it, but there are other volunteers around to yeah, help. the community that would help folks like that. That's very I, good. I can put that on when uh, when I put the posts out. I can put that on the posts also um <coughs> you know if you need help moving you have to call from the basement right. contact us or whatever there are people that so want to help they just don't know where to just go or how to offer i'll put it in the next newsletter too i'll retain it that we're gathering this list of volunteers willing to help at a moment's notice basically right. Right. i mean i have so people I, will form I had people today call me this morning about their basements and that with water in it and we were at the fire department we were actually down in Carnegie uh, assisting on a decent sized house fire you know it's just not enough time and place and I explained to them hey we're on fire but I'll get back to you and I did and they understood so but I'll be in touch with them day by day to see how it goes okay. thank you thank you uh, South Virginia Stan Miller Melbourne Report <laughs> um, historical society. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, tomorrow is the 17th anniversary of 9-11-2001. I urge everyone here, please attend the service tomorrow night at Holy Child Church at 7 o'clock. It's a very impressive service, and it always reminds me of where was I when all was that, when all that was going on, what was I doing? And it's very difficult for me to believe it, but it's for real. <clears throat> and I'll never forget Larry Lemon saying, we're still at war, we're still at war. But I urge you to attend that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. It's really very worth it because the police departments, the fire departments, the emergency meds, all are recognized for all that they do. Not just for Bridgeville, but wherever they are, they do help. <coughs> um, at the end of the month, the last Tuesday of the month, we're having an interested speaker substitute at our program held at the fire hall. There are two young men, Rob and Rob, who go around with whatever, and when they find a certain noise in the soil, they will dig. And they have found historical item after historical item, along with some valuable items. So it's an interesting program. They were here, I think, in January or November. Uh, very, very interesting young men. And I urge you, that's at 7.30 at the fire hall, the last Tuesday of the month. And to end the month, one of my favorite things, sorry, I'm taking this away from you. Oh, come on, Mary. <laughs> you can uh, say it again. <laughs> I'm helping sell tickets for a very worthwhile cause. And who got me into that was Skip Pelosi. Thank you very much. And I've continued to this day. It's the cook-off, and I just urge you to, to come. It's a good time. I'll be selling raffle tickets there, too. And 
please help us. It's the 30th Sunday from 11 to 4, am I right? 12 to 4. 12 to 4. Oh, that weekend. Well, Thank you very much. Donut boil on Friday, the beer fest beer on, on Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> 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 Should we put on Sunday? We'll be a rare for <laughs> Monday, we're yeah. calling off work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, is anybody here for the live? I can address that. Yeah, sure. Apparently, there's signs around Bridgeville Love Your Library. I hope everyone loves your library. Uh, fundraising month going on, and monies we received this month, there's also a matching fund by the Flexner Foundation. So, a portion of that will be matched by them for monies received during this campaign. In addition to that, the board is in the process of uh, developing a strategic plan to take the library to 2020 and beyond. That's what we're currently working on as a board. So, really no other news at this point. All right, thank you very much. Sure. I'll be here from the parking authority. Uh, Nina, do you have anything more to mention about the planning commission? No, really. Yes, uh, most of the cut, all the cuts are one there. So, yeah. you already know that uh, right. we heard many, uh, what, we heard a couple of different opinions. And I stress it at night. What are we doing now? We hire the girl that, uh, I should say the girl, that advice and the person advice it, and give her another $40,000 to do another plan? Come on. All these things should be, should be done maybe before we hire somebody. And then uh, take inventory of all these things. We pay $40,000, and there's no way that we can accept anything else incorporated, in my opinion. I'm not the only vote there, I'm only one vote. Right. To redo the whole thing, $40,000 to draw in that. Okay. We thought that this would be a good idea. I mean, you hear many things. Some people want to keep all the street. I say one thing at the Planning Commission, and you guys hear me. If we don't do something in a hurry, Baldwin Street will be self-destructive. And to wait 30 years, by then, Baldwin won't be there anymore. So we have to try to do something for that. This is what we're trying to do. You know, we work on them every day on that. The, one, the only thing I will say about it, you know, it's easy to sit there and do a do-it-yourself do project. So sure. Sure. But if we're gonna, if as a community, if we're gonna go out and try to get all these grant monies that you're talking about, that's just out there, to go out and get a grants for this, you can't just sit there and say, hey, we want to fix up Baldwin Street or solve a problem here. You have to have a plan. conceptual plan. Right. And if you're not gonna sit there and go, well, you know, Bill Henderson just drew this up on a bar napkin and says this is what we want to do. That's not the plan. <laughs> it would be a really good plan. Yes. We can sit there, we can go, sure, we can go, we can go up to, you know, crap the jackal, we can sure. sit there and go, we, should, we could do this, but they're not going to accept that as our grand <laughs> You have to have something like this to get those monies that, these millions of dollars that it costs. So, sure. this, will, it this will, Mr. Chairman, as well as you know, this will be incorporated in our comprehensive plan, which pretty soon we have updated, it's another sixty, seventy thousand dollars exactly. This way might save us that money because we're adding some on our short system. It will be updated. All this go to the county as well. Everybody knows the county got approved that blah 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 blah. So that's where we are. Well, and, and as right. a note, the plan does include funding. Sources. Absolutely. Yes. So it's not like she's handing us a plan and saying, have at it. Right. There are different funding sources for different items sure. on the um, uh, in the different phases. So right. it's not like we're just left out to dry and, and I'm sitting looking at it saying, I don't know what to do. It's, it's also fair to say, sorry, that she just didn't hand us a plan. The, you know, she didn't get forty thousand dollars to run off the plan. What those no. folks do, professional, they actually work. This plan was designed by you folks, by the planning commission and the consultants, and back and forth. Talk your thoughts back and forth. A lot of ideas back and forth. 
that led to this conceptual plan. It's not her $36 million plan or whatever plan, it's actually your plan and with the funding sources. And many of that is to save half of, the, you know, what's there is to save. If you're not converting a commercial into a floodplain, actually they converted a floodplain into a commercial, you're going to save half of it. A lot of the monies that would go with property acquisition would be over a long period of time, and it's the federal voluntary buyout monies that right. help, you know, a lot of that. See, a lot of people think that we can buy their home. The, the, home, the government buy their so We can buy properties. No, and it doesn't the, matter. The government, yeah. we can't know about the properties. As a matter of fact, um, Joe may have someone in his office that uh, can start helping me work on the FEMA housing mitigation program so that we can get started on that for property owners that want to want to get started sure. with that process now. Yeah, so it that it's not sitting in my staff waiting to be done. So. Thank you. Uh, actually, Mr. Chamber, we feel in planning commission that our next meeting we will send this plan to council. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can you use the No. <laughs> <laughs> you must you want me to say in Italian? No. I don't have a sound mixer. What do you want to build a plan? Uh, or a manager. Uh, I apologize for not having a formal report. I was just really busy and I just didn't have time to do one. Um, I just want to touch on, um, as of today, um, the flood relief fund balance is $56,941. And I do believe there's a deposit coming um, from the fundraiser that um, BJ and her daughter, Libby did, yeah. yes, um, at Hickory Heights. Mm -hmm. um, so um, after that, I think we'll we're working on getting all of the addresses ready, and uh, I think Tom said there's one more on September 29th. So then I guess after that we'll be ready. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to touch on 686 Baldwin Street. That's a property that um, is sitting at the edge of Baldwin, Baldwin with the, the fence around it, um, with everyone thinking that nothing was going to be done. I talk, actually talked to the property owner on Friday, which was his deadline date. Um, he um, is supposed to have a contract to to meet this week um, for a contractor to do the work per Joe's <coughs> specifications. And I talked with two or three contractors last week. They had some questions about the scope of work, and I confirmed for them. So they're all apples to apples. Okay, so it looks basically like basically filled the hole, put grass on it, and we'll basically clean the hole yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Get everything out of there. Put compact it, fill it in since you're so close to the creek, <coughs> so it doesn't wash out, and then. Right. Yeah, it can be worse. So it looks like we're making progress on that. The one thing we didn't want to happen is for the borough to do it and lean that property because that would be lost money. And the last subject that I wanted to touch on, which is a little disappointing to me, we had uh, started the backflow preventer project and we had started with Baldwin Street. We sent, um, we sent informational flyers down uh, in the spring asking if they had left backflow preventers, asking if they would be interested in getting backflow preventers. We had to start in one area. Um, and we received their responses. Um, we moved forward. Um, we asked them if they would be willing to participate in the program. They said yes. Um, we bid the project. We sent out the contract um, because Tom had to do um, <coughs> legally binding contracts um, with these people. And there were 19 individuals that said they wanted to participate. Um, the contracts were sent out June 26th. Um, I sent them a final notice in August. And I'm sorry to say I only have nine responses. So for 
individuals that have issues with back with backflow coming into their homes, it's very disappointing that there are only nine responses coming in. So what we're trying going to try to do is um, some other individuals yes. that do have issues that we know of since they did 19. We're going to try to find 10 more and um, uh, give them the opportunity to come in on this contract. <coughs> so, been a little disappointing. Yeah. Especially Thank all the work you do. Yes. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Uh, old business. New business? I have a few things. Go ahead, Joe. I know it's a surprise. Joe, um, you had said the Chartier's Park is going to be closed. Uh, the annual Ron Schott tournament, softball tournament, is this weekend, this Saturday. So, uh, what is it? Check it out. Yeah, it's just a communication thing. I know Ron Schott, Ron Schott, it is for Ron Schott. Randy <laughs> Schott went down to the park today. He felt that as long as we didn't have rain, the field should dry out. That field dries out very well, but. You know, it depends on how all that other water is going too. So, uh, you might, I, I'll let him know that you were talking about it too, or you probably need to talk to you. Yeah, just have him call, call us, and um, okay. you know, we'll take a look and unlock it. But, but as I said, it's this Saturday at eight o'clock uh, throughout the day. Uh, in, a, in addition to softball, hopefully, uh, they'll have bands, uh, great food, and a humongous. I've never seen it. The Chinese auction as big as theirs, and they have really, really nice prizes. Um, and all the money that they raise goes towards a couple of things that Ron uh, loved very dearly: the lacrosse, and the swimming club, the BAA, uh, and actually he he had some stuff uh, where he grew up too that they uh, donated money to. So it's a really good cause. If you can just come down for an hour, even. Um, and as Mary Weiss has stole uh, my thunder, the Bridgeville South Bend <laughs> Rotary <laughs> is having their annual chili event on September 30th. Is there two more? It's the same one. <laughs> um, I do have tickets. Uh, they are $10 to come in and eat probably over 20 different types of chilies. They have all kinds of other stuff. Uh, they'll have a whole bunch of kid uh, programs going on as well as uh, for all the non-chili kids, uh, we'll be cooking burgers and hot dogs and things like that. Um, for another $10, you also will be getting into a raffle for four club seats for a penguin game, uh, a parking pass. These are the really, really nice seats um, with an estimated value of over $1,200. And those tickets are $10 as well, so I have some of those too. And last but not least, the Chamber of Commerce sent me an email asking to announce uh, they have a uh, networking event this Thursday at Top Golf. Uh, they're going to have a full spread buffet. Uh, you'll be able to make fun of me as I hit a couple golf balls and uh, uh, fun had my own in that event. So if you want to go, I will be going. Uh, it's this Thursday night. I think it starts at 6. That's all I have. Anything else? Where is Chili Cook-Off, did you say? Uh, Fairview Park. Any other business? I'm just mad we haven't heard from John Wick back there. You, did, you missed it. He was whimpering before. <laughs> I mean, there's been a gorgeous little puppy back there. This won't be easy. Mr. Wick. This is the newest addition to Lori's family. Is there a second? For a Harry, you're right. All those in favor? Uh, I thought it was part of the family. Yes. Mm-hmm.